Hi guys, Jordan from BMP Campers. I'm going to be doing your handover video on this Chasson Allegro. <clears throat> uh, based on the Fiat Ducato, it is the 3 litre and it is an Allegro 93. Um, so it is a 57 plate vehicle, so late 2007, early 2008 registered. Uh, and so we'll start here under the bonnet. So over on the left hand side is where they keep all the sort of consumable bits and pieces. So you've got your washer fluid up here, power steering fluid, engine coolant, brake fluid, engine oil, and your engine oil dipstick. Over to the right, we've got your air filter inside this box just here. Positive terminal for your engine battery just here and a negative terminal for that just here as well. So if you want to jump start the vehicle, you've got negative there, positive there. Um, and that's about it for under the bonnet really. Um, the, the engine battery itself sits under the floor in the cab just in front of the passenger seat. And so that's why they put those uh, jump starting points under the bonnet. So you don't have to get under here to jump start it. The bonnet release handle is just here inside this passenger door. And the jack and wheel brace kit is here underneath the passenger seat. So just behind the passenger door here, we've got the diesel filling point here as well. <coughs> Bodywork on this particular vehicle is absolutely lovely, as you can probably see. So um, when you want to drain the fresh tank out, <coughs> there's a bung inside the tank. The tank itself sits underneath the forward facing seats just here in the dinette. Um, so when you want to drain that out, there is a bung inside there. The freshwater filling point is this one just here to the right of that. Um, and then your wastewater drain off point is on the other side, but I'll point that out to you when we get there. Toilet cassette locker. So this is a Thetford toilet cassette. So to take this out, we've got a little yellow tab at the bottom, lift that up and then we can take the entire cassette out. The only other thing you need to know really from there is that you drain out the cassette from here and hold down the little yellow button there at the back as you're draining it out. And that's it. Push it all the way back away when you uh, want to put it back in. And that's it, stowed away. So at the back, we've got reversing camera at the top, two bike bike rack, and the tow bar here at the bottom as well. You have got reversing sensors here as well, but fingers crossed the uh, reversing camera should be uh, you know, really helpful. You've got one camera looking straight down that you can see just on this side of the bike rack. So you can actually see right down to the floor so you can see how far you can go to things. And another one which faces straight out, which gives you a bit more rear view um, from there as well. So that's really handy. Um, inside here, as you can see, is access to the underneath of the fixed bed. Um, so you've got the spare wheel just inside here, which is always better than having it up underneath. Um, and then this is just basically the box to do with the reversing sensors. So loads of storage in there, easily accessible from the outside and inside. Um, this cupboard just here on the offside is the gas locker. So at the moment, you've just got the single six kilo propane bottle in there um nice and simple set up in here so you've got the pigtail hose just here it goes straight to the regulator and the regulator just goes straight into the vehicle um so you have got space in here for two of these six kilo propanes if you did need two of them um but at the moment we, we just tend to give away one um so anti-clockwise on the top here turns the bottle on clockwise around to the right turns it off and then basically you just turn it off when you want to start driving away and turn it back on again as you park up. So the wastewater drain off point is this black handle just here underneath. So you pull the handle towards you and that will drain out all the water from inside the waste tank. And that is just there from that little symbol there. You've then got your external gas point. So this is a bullfinch gas fitting. Um, essentially, this is your barbecue point. And the idea behind it is that you have the awning wound out with the awning light on, and then you've got your gas barbecue point just there if you should need it. And that will basically just be fed directly from the standard gas bottle in the locker there. Next door to that, we've got your Truma 
uh, boiler vent just here. So if you wanted to double check that the boiler was definitely working, you can put your hand underneath this and that'll basically just tell you whether or not the boiler is definitely lit because you'll feel hot air. Next thing along is your hookup point. So if you have access to a hookup cable, I would always advise to have it plugged in as often as you can. Um, it basically just keeps your batteries charged up fully um, and just means you haven't got to worry about any battery voltage drains or anything like that because it would be sort of hooked up and charging. Also gives you access to using any 240 volt things you might have inside the vehicle. So the fridge can work on mains, etc. But I'll run you through all of that as we get in there. These two vents just here to the left of the habitation door are both to do with the fridge. So if you ever needed to get to the back of the fridge for any reason, then that's where you'd go for that. Um, it's mainly for, for us really when we're doing servicing on the fridges and things like that, gas burners, etc. Um, so you shouldn't ever need to go into those, but that is what they're for. Great big bin here on the habitation door, as you can see. And then what I'll do is I'll just run you through um, the cabs. So the head unit itself, we have put a new one on here. Um, the old one just wasn't working whatsoever. So you've got a nice new Pioneer head unit on there. So that's got USB, CD player, radio, um, and I think it works with Android as well. If you wanted to plug it in, if you've got an Android phone, auxiliary point there as well. So it's a nice modern head unit. Um, so that's there. We've got the um, electronic adjusting mirrors from that little dial just there. Your indicators and lights are on the left-hand stalk here. The washers and wipers are on the right. You've also got the cruise control function on this one. So you literally turn that one on there and then use the button at the end and up and down to change the speeds and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to use that, that's where that's from. You've got the six speed manual gearbox on this one, which is a really nice gearbox to use. Um, you know, tends to sit fairly low on the revs if you're on the motorway in sixth gear. Um, as I say, you've got the new Pioneer head unit, air conditioning works from the switch just there in the middle, and then you've got your heater controls either side of that. You can lock and unlock the cab from inside just here. Uh, and you've got your hazard warning lights to the left of that. Both of these front seats swivel round, so you've basically just got this little handle here, which you pull this way, and then that allows the seat to swivel. So that's if you, you know, if you're going to want to turn it around and use it as part of the diner area. All right, so what I'm just going to do quickly now is just show you the reversing camera as well. So with the camera, I've wired it up to an ignition live cable, so it will only work when the ignition is turned on. So it comes on now, look. So that is your rear facing camera. Uh, press it one more time. And that there is your down facing camera. So that's where you can see the back of the vehicle just there. Um, so you can really you know, reverse right up the things uh, and you know, it just gives you really nice, easy access to seeing that. So as you see, if I turn the ignition off, camera goes off as well and what that means is that you don't have to worry about any battery drains or anything like that it won't drain the battery out if the ignition is off okay so what i'll do now is i'll just jump into the back of the van and show you what we've got going on in here right so uh there was a couple of couple of lights up here that weren't working so i've done a bit of rewiring up there some of them have come out and plugged in the wrong way and things so that's all being done um all working and all sort of in their correct slots uh nicely as well um so first thing i'm going to run you through is going to be the control panel um so this is a chasson branded pc 200 control panel um one of the most simple control panels to use, if I'm honest. Um, so what you've got is a main power switch over on the top right, an awning light switch, and water pump. So when you turn the power switch on, that will then turn power on to all of the lights. So you've got individual switches for all the lights all around the vehicle. Um, you've got a little switch over here, which does the light uh, somewhere. Yeah, I can't remember exactly which one that does, but there's a switch just over there. Um, I always remember that because we could, kept on losing it, um, forgetting where it was. Um, there's also a couple of unusually placed switches inside the little cubby holes up there, which are for these lights 
as you can see there. So if you need to turn those on, they're inside the little cubby hole bits. Uh, but yeah, various lights all around the vehicle that all get powered on, as I said, when you turn the power switch on just here. The awning light switch, that's specifically only for the awning light. So that just literally turns that one on and off from there. So we can turn that off for now. Uh, the water pump. So you've got an inline pump in this particular vehicle, which means that it works on pressure. So anytime that you turn the water pump switch on, if it's not completely 100% up to pressure, it will run for a minute until it gets to pressure and then turn itself off. So essentially the idea is behind that is that that's the way that you check that the boiler is full of water before you start using it and that you've got no air in the system for the vehicle. So for example, let's just say we've just come into the vehicle, we're gonna turn the pump on. And then what I would do is come over to, this, to the sink just here, draw the water through the cold side. So we've got good pressure there and then draw it through on the hot side as well. We've got good pressure there as well. So doing that and then listening, now that I've turned that tap off, listening to make sure that the pump turns itself off, which it just has, tells us for an absolute fact that the boiler's full, first of all, because we had hot water coming through, well, water coming through the hot side of the tap, and that we've got no air in the system. All right, and that's really important because if you try and light the boiler up uh, to get the hot, the water hot, for example, and there's no water inside of it, then it's more than likely going to overheat or give you some sort of problems. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. That's, that's you know, take you a few seconds just to make sure you've got pressure in the tank. So on the left hand side here, we've got your gauges. So we press there, that shows us we've got eight litres in the fresh water tank. Next one up is your leisure and vehicle battery voltages. So we've got leisure because of the caravan and then vehicle because of the cab. And then there's one at the top, we've got internal temperature and external temperature. All right, so easy as that. So all of the left-hand side is just your gauges and on the right-hand side is your power. Now this little light here is flashing at us, telling us that the, the fresh tank is nearly empty because we've only got eight liters in it, but uh, you know, that's all it does. It doesn't make any noise at you, it just flashes like that. So um, that is the control panel, easy as that. So as you can probably see, um, we've got the really nice layout here where we can have the seats just here as proper forward facing seats with seat belts. So if you need to use it as that, you literally just take this little cushion out here and slide the little sliders across. And then that gives you full leg room here for the, for the passenger on the left. Um, if you're using it as like a, a, you know, having people around sort of to sit around this table, as I said, you would probably turn around the front seats and that gives you a massive, massive, great sort of uh, sleeping area or, or sitting area here as well. So um, habitation check has all been done. Absolutely everything was fine, apart from a couple of lights, a couple of bits and pieces, nothing major at all. Um, so that has all been done. Um, the sink is, is very, very important. Like I was saying about that, drawing the water through hot and cold, that is really important because if you don't do that, you know, the boiler is the most expensive part in the van. So it is important to just double check that first uh, before you start using it. If you just want to use the heating, you don't have to worry about that so much. You don't have to have water inside the boiler to use the heating. Um, but I'll run you through that when we get to that in a minute. So you've got the extractor and lights under here as well. Uh, a couple of sockets that have been fitted aftermarket, but they do they are wired up properly and to the trip switch. So, you know, they are proper. I've, uh, we have to test them as part of the habitation check. So that's all good. Um, the three burner hob. So you do need an ignition of some sort to light any of these up. So you need like a, you know, a long reach lighter or something like that to light any of these up. But you've basically just got these little switches pushing them around to the left to get the gas to come through. Underneath here, we've got your uh, sort of, you know, cutlery drawer. Absolutely tons of storage throughout this whole van. Uh, down here, we've got a gas isolator for those three burners at the top. So this little thing here, you can undo that if you want to, or, or you can use it if you want to. I think somebody's put it there just at some point to stop any sort of possible moving around whilst driving, for example. Um, but 
thankfully you can't really see it when it's away so that's okay um right just make sure i'm not going to miss anything out so the oven and grill up here this is a dometic uh oven and grill same make as the fridge so basically the way that this works is you've got grill pushing around to the right and oven pushing and round to the left and it has its it has its own ignition so it'll, you know it'll ignite as you do it so really as easy as that i don't think it's ever been used if i'm completely honest um as you can see it's all in its original wrapping and it's all you know looks brand new to me but uh, there you go I, I did test all of that as part of the hab check as well that is all good the locks on these were both broken um so i have sorted both of those so they are good now um you see the other one working what happens a lot of the time on these fridges is you get this little part in here tends to break uh or the plastic bits around it will break but um there you go so they're both good now they've both been sorted um so this is a electronic ignition and automatic energy selecting fridge so what I mean by that is, if I just shut these up, sorry. So what I mean by that is that the fridge itself will work on three different energies, or you can leave it on its auto function and it will automatically choose one of those three energies for you all the time. So um, the auto function is, is, as I said, you just literally choose automatic and it should just do it for you. But what I'll do is I'll run you through how to do it manually um, mainly because every now and again the auto function will be incorrect so you know it is always good to know how to do it manually as well so we've got the one that we're on at the moment just here is your gas next one down is if you're hooked up on the mains and the next one down below that is 12 volts so that's if your engine's running so the idea is that gas or 240 volt are the only two that will get the fridge cold by itself so if you if you chose 12 volt here First off, it's going to give you a red light because the engine's not running, so it's not working. Um, but it's not powerful enough to get the fridge cold by itself. So you have to pre-cool it before you switch over to 12 volt for whilst you drive. So, for example, if you're at home and you had a hookup cable plugged into it, or at a campsite you had a hookup plugged into it, you would be here on hookup. And this would then light up green because you're hooked up on the mains. If, for example, you're like me right now and I don't have a hookup plugged in, but I do have the gas on, all you have to do is select gas. It will light up at the back of the fridge and that's it. That's all you have to do. And that's the electronic ignition part of it. Um, all you have to worry about then is this temperature gauge and that's it. So gas or 240 volt electric to get it cold and then switch over to 12 volt, which is your battery one here for whilst you're driving. So you've got something called a split charger or a split relay. Um, and essentially what that means is that all the time that you're driving and the alternator is charging the engine battery, the split relay is taking some of that power and sending it off to the leisure battery as well, allowing the leisure battery to be charged as you drive as well. As part of that split relay, you do get an extra cable, a pair of cables coming back to the fridge, which means that you can use the, two, the 12 volt battery function on it via the engine um, and that's why it will only work when the engine's running all right so that is the fridge now the, the fridge i will say as well i mean this is the same for all motime fridges please don't expect it to get cold after half an hour or something you know it, it's only like brand new fridges that do that you know you can expect it to take probably three four hours even to get fully fully cold um but once they're cold they're absolutely fine that you know they, they'll just sort of trickle along as they need to but they do take a little while to get there right so in this wardrobe um we've got up here we've got your tv aerial itself so this is the tilt and turn aerial and the tv aerial booster so there's a little light on the front of this booster that has to be on by switching this little switch here and once that's turned on, that will then be boosting the signal that it's getting from this and sending it over to the TV area. So that's just through here. So the TV itself is all still there. I mean, I must admit, we don't actually cover uh, aftermarket fitments as part of the, you know, as part of the sale. But 
you know, it's all there from the previous owner. I'm sure it all works, you know, if, if you want to get it out and have a go. It's just that we don't do it as part of the hab check. It's not it's not part of a habitation check. So um, give it a go. You know, if you do get any problems with it, you can just let us know. But um, fingers crossed, it's all good. Uh, but anyway, the aerial socket that it's all plugged into back there was the point I was trying to get to, uh, is correlated to this TV aerial booster. So that's where that sort of is wired into. So to use these TV aerials, it does normally tell you on here um, some information about it. There you go, all that sort of stuff there. Um, but essentially you just undo this little nut at the top here and then you can push it up and twist it around and move it around as the way you need to. Um, so there's various sort of ways that you can have it, but uh, there you go. So absolutely stacks of storage in this locker just here. Um, not much else to show you in there, if I'm honest, but just loads of storage. Okay, um, so underneath the bed, if I just lift this up first. So this just literally lifts up out of the way like that, nice and easily. Now this cupboard down here is very, very important. So this has got, so it's a little cover here underneath the bed, basically. Um, now in here, what you've got is the boiler itself, which is this big black unit here. You've then got over towards the back. Sorry, this thing's just falling on my arm all the time. Um, so this part in the middle just here is your solar controller. So that is basically the thing that takes the solar power's power that it's sending down and splits it off between engine and leisure batteries. So that is just sort of doing its thing all the time. You haven't got to press any buttons on that. You just leave it as it is, um, but that's it. You've then got to the left of that, your 240 volt charger. So when you're hooked up on the mains, that is the charger that charges up the batteries. So that is there. You've then got, 240 volt trip switches inside this one and your 12 volt fuses inside the other. You've also got in this cupboard a few more uh, gas isolators. So the top one is the um, oven and grill, middle one is the fridge and the bottom one is this boiler. So the most important thing to show you in this uh, locker here is this little red pulley thing at the bottom. Now what that is, is the boiler drain off point. So if you are sort of coming up to winter time, I mean, this time of year, it's, I mean, it's coming up to summer now, so you're not gonna have to worry about this at all. Um, but when it starts getting down to sort of five degrees, four degrees, that sort of like wintry weather, and you're not gonna be using the vehicle, you have to make sure that you drain the water out of all the appliances. So uh, when I say appliances, I, ju I just mean drain the boiler out and drain your fresh tank out. That's about it really. Um, it's about all you can do. So by pushing that little red button down, uh, it's up at the moment, but if I pushed it down now, all of the water inside the boiler would drain out straight onto the floor underneath that. All right, so that's how you drain the actual boiler out. Um, <clears throat> so as I say, that's you only have to do that when you're getting up to winter uh, and you want to winterize the vehicle. So by lifting it back up again and it's staying up, all the water will then stay inside the boiler um, and you know you can just fill it back up again by pulling the tap but that is where the boiler drain off point is now the other thing i will say about that is that because it's one of those newer ones the red red topped ones it will drop out automatically for you if it gets down to a certain temperature it will drop out automatically now that's all well and good until you want to use it but you can't because it won't stay up uh, and it won't stay up because it thinks it's too cold. So what you have to do in that instance, if you, if you want to use the vehicle over winter and you can't get that thing to stay up, all you have to do is come to the controller, which I'll run you through in a minute, turn it on heating only for 10, 15 minutes or so, and then lift it up. So what it does is it tricks the boiler into thinking that it's warmer than it is, and then it'll allow you to lift the pulley up. But there you go, nice and easy. Right, so the actual boiler controls just here. So it's a Trumatic C is the name of the boiler. So it's gas only, it doesn't work on mains, it's literally just gas only. So as long as you've got some gas in the, in the bottle there and it's switched on, you should then be able to use it. So easy as this, if you want to heat the water up, but you don't want any heating, you go up one 
or up to, and that's either 40 or 60 degrees of hot water. If it's the other way around, you don't want any hot water, but you do want heating, you go down one, and that's your heating only function. And if you want both at the same time, heating and hot water, you go all the way down to the bottom. So if you've got the heating on, so you've either got it one down or two down, you'll get hot air pumping out through any of these little circular gray vents around the vehicle, which there will be quite a few of. Uh, and if you've got the hot water on, it will take about half an hour or so to start warming up. But that is it. That is honestly super easy. Um, these controllers tend to be very reliable for us. I don't tend to get any issues really with those. Um, but yeah. So, as I said, hot water is up. Heating is one down. Both at the same time is two down. The gauge in the middle is basically just a uh, for the heating only to be fair it's only if you know if you're in a real hurry for some heating turn it way up and then it will just get going um, but it's just a temperature thing really so there you go back to the middle turns it off and that's it all right so I'll just pop this bed down now Absolutely stacks of paperwork for the vehicle, by the way, in this um, folder here. I always recommend having a good look through it. I mean, not, not everyone's got the time to, to sit and read through it, I know, but um, it is important because there are lots of things in this vehicle that you, you know, you might get to and just not really understand. Uh, obviously, I'm hoping that most of it's going to be covered in this video, but um, there should be paperwork for nearly everything in that in that folder there. So if you do get a minute, if you want to have a little look through that and just sort of get a, get to know everything it does normally help out a lot um but there you go right so in the bathroom so you've got the rear shower here so the shower goes up at the very rear of the van um so that means that you don't get everything soaking wet every time you want to have a shower because you've got this screen that comes across um that is literally just hot and cold left and right from there nice and easy you've also got the skylight which winds open up there as well so you don't get it it doesn't get too humid in there um the toilet is normally the only bit that i actually run through to be honest because it's it's everything else is pretty self-explanatory it's just hot and cold taps really um but with the toilets all you need to know really is you've got a blue button over here on the right press that and that pumps around the water for the flush fluid when you want to drain it out into the cassette you've got a little grey handle over here, so you pull that towards us. That's now drained into the cassette, and then push it back. That's all gone away. So, it really is as easy as that. Um, bathroom, you've got a switch just down here for the lights. There you go. Pull this back across. And then we are all good. Um, you've also got over here towards the back. So this is what you call a turbo fan. All right. So if I just show you how this works, I'm just going to open it. That's a little bit stiff. Let's just get that open. I might just have to uh, lubricate that a little bit, but basically this will be free when you get to picking the vehicle up. Um, but I will sort that out in just a minute. Essentially, the idea behind the turbo fan is that you've got this little knob just here, which turns on this fan. So the idea is you can have the skylight wound open and then have the turbo fan blowing air in. You can either have it going in or out by this switch over here. So I've just changed it. So it was blowing out just then. So you can have it almost as like an extractor fan blowing out, or you can have it blowing nice cool air straight down on top of you on the bed. So yeah, I will get, I will get that open. It's obviously just rubbing on it a little bit there. So I'll sort that out in just a minute. But that's the turbo fan just there. Um, they tend to work really well. I mean, if you're, you know, instead of having like a three or four thousand pound air conditioning unit up there, it, you know, it works pretty well um, as an alternative to that. So I'll sort that out now. Um, 
I think I've covered everything. Uh, I, I don't think I've missed anything out, but if I have, just let us know. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.